here I was, legit about to prepare to do a brand new Rakeda retardation, and what happens? Gerard the Completionist uploads his apology video. Now, I will give him credit. I've watched like five seconds of this. I will give him credit. He doesn't do the sigh that every single other YouTuber does. You know, you can look at Pro Jared, Pro Jared's apology apology video when he did uh, when he apologized for like cheating on his wife. You know, like uh, like every single time, <laughs> like every single time. Um, that's become kind of a stereotype now. It's uh, it's seen as a emotional manipulation. So that's. Uh, it's why Gerard didn't do it. I'm sure. Like I, I am certain. Looking into into uh, you know the comment section, which I've already glanced at, seeing like the general reaction to this, seeing how long he took. Like I am certain he spent the past couple of weeks speaking to like tax attorneys, getting everything sorted out before retaliating uh, to Carl Jobs. Like uh, this guy. What you have to understand about Gerard uh, Khalil, right, is that he is. From a millionaire background, right? He does have the resources to evade uh, the IRS and like charity fraud, right? Like the main thing he's doing is trying to salvage his brand at this point. Um, going by what I've seen with the with the Carl Jobs thing, I am still very much uh, pro Carl Jobs at the at this point. Like I believe that Gerard did do something illicit. At the very least, we know he hold he held onto the money. For far longer than he was supposed to, uh, after claiming he had already donated it. So th there's definitely a lot of uh, interesting situation. Uh, it, it's definitely an interesting situation, and it's one that I'm very interested in seeing develop. Uh, how this major gaming YouTuber is going to handle like this legal lawsuit? I, I, I'm very interested. Over the past few weeks, allegations have been made against me, my family in our charitable organization, the Open Hand Foundation, asserting charity fraud and more. I'm here today to provide clarity and transparency to set the record straight. I wanna make it 100% clear. At no point in the foundation's history was there any criminal or financial fraud. Okay, well, he, hmm. Okay. I am certain he's reading out the script. Like I like I mentioned earlier, like I'm sure he's spoken to lawyers. I'm sure he's gotten his entire speech ironed out. Like there's a reason he's not going to make any public statements about this because he doesn't want to incriminate uh, incriminate himself further. It is kind of my take on this. Uh, he he wants to sweep it under the rug and hope his fanboys just kind of forgive and forget. Uh, kind of like what Pro Jared's fanboys did. Um, but I, I'm not sure that's gonna work. Uh, I I do think. There's going to be, like, a lot more um, skepticism regarding his channel and his, like, his conduct going forward. At the very least, he his image of, of being a wholesome YouTube personality is tarnished forever, right? Of course, like, uh, people like me have already – have always, like, spoken out against him for, like, the JonTron thing and, like, uh, being on the panel with Frost when – we, she went off on that feminist rant. Like, there, there are plenty of things to not like about Gerard. You know, thinking Spyro 2 is better than 3 is unforgivable. But, like, I I, uh, I don't trust him, is my point. Is, uh, I don't trust any gaming YouTuber, right? So anybody who's taking what he's saying here at face value uh, is deluding themselves. Like, I remember pro jared like releasing his apology video and claiming that like oh i i have the receipts you know i did nothing wrong but in reality he did do a lot of things wrong right Th there was no salvaging his gaming channel at that point right like he still has like over eight hundred thousand subs but that's a huge decline from where he was at and his views are going down all the time he had to rebrand right so uh, I i'm curious if uh, the same thing is going to happen to gerard None. I also want to touch on why I've been quiet for these last few weeks. You were talking to lawyers. Folks have been saying that lawyers, and not like the Nick Rakata internet attorney type, like actual practicing tax attorneys. You know, people who actually handle, uh, deal with the IRS and stuff like that. You know, handle these kind of issues. Like, <laughs> I, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you were like, ugh. that if I didn't do anything wrong, that. 
I should have said something sooner, or that my conversation with the accusers was considered my full side of the story. But when there is allegation after allegation being made, it takes a long time to gather the evidence and facts to refute claims. This will be my only video response on this matter. Okay, like who, who wants to bet this is the this ends up being the only video response? I I'm sure there's gonna be more. I'm sure sure there's gonna be more. I can confirm that as of Wednesday, November twenty ninth, twenty twenty three, the Open Hand Foundation has donated six hundred thousand dollars to the Association for Frontotemporal Degeneration. However, it did take too long to get to this moment. And for that, I am sorry. The money is now in good hands to make a lasting impact. For more information on the donation, there will be a link down below that you can check out. Now to further provide context on the Open Hand Foundation, my mother got sick when I was young. She was diagnosed with frontotemporal degeneration, a form of dementia that far too often goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. I was 10 years old when signs of her dementia started showing up. She was officially diagnosed with FTD four years later when I was 14, and she died when I was 25. My mom's battle with this disease lasted nearly 15 years, and after experiencing the struggles and hardships... Of okay, but what does that have to do with the charity itself, though? Like, this isn't, like, the YouTube sigh. It's not, like, the stereotypical YouTube apology. It's like he did... He avoided doing the, the stereotypical thing... Of, like, doing the sigh at the beginning of the video, but, like, it, it's the same kind of tactic, right? Of just, like, oh, my dead mom. Like, her her suffering really personally affected me, which is why I had to withhold all this charity money <laughs> from all these different organizations that I claimed I was donating to. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what's going on here. Like, this is pure manipulation. Like, you should not take this seriously. Caring for someone with dementia, we decided to start a foundation in her honor. Before this, my family had been donating money as well as spending time with my mother, academics, and doctors to help them with their own understanding of FTD. My father runs an annual golf tournament, and this golf event hasn't always contained a charitable component, but has always been in dedication to my mother to bring awareness to FTD. I would often be present at these events. But beyond giving an occasional speech, I was not and still am not involved in any of the event planning. In 2018, I took two things I'm passionate about, indie games and charity work, and started IndieLand to highlight the indie game community and raise money in honor of my mom for a good cause. During several recent IndieLand events, press interviews, and podcasts, I went on record saying where the money was going to and that the Open Hand Foundation had worked with various organizations. At different points, the foundation had been in communication with or considered several of them, but it was not appropriate for me to make such statements when final actions had not yet been taken. What? <sighs> These are like premier dementia charities, though. Like, if you're talking to charities, you know, uh, in preparation to donating money, <laughs> like, why exactly would you back out, right? Like, uh, no, I, I don't believe this at all, right? That that doesn't make any sense. Like, no, no. The Open Hand Foundation's goal was to make a large impact by donating the money to the right place. And a lot of the conversations that were had with various organizations involved the funds not being restricted or came with extremely high administrative costs. Look, any way you say this, action needed to be taken. And to that point, I'm sorry. I'm disappointed that I was not more straightforward regarding the foundation's timeline for making donations and that I made statements potentially implying donations were made when they had not yet been. It took too long for clear action to occur. Yeah, like 100% a, a, a lawyer wrote this. <laughs> like, help them draft this speech. This does not seem like him at all. And I apologize for all of this. But such inaction was not done for any selfish or malicious reasons. I want to take this opportunity to apologize to any developers, publishers, content creators, and special guests who were involved with the various events. I'm also very sorry to this year's IndieLand sponsor. Their team was incredibly supportive and were a great partner to work with. 
It's like that uh, South Park thing with that guy uh, from BP, like after the oil spill. Like, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Most importantly, I want to apologize to anyone who ever donated over the years who felt they were wronged or led astray by any of this. Dementia is an incredibly important cause to me and my family and so many of you at home. Advocating for more awareness has been such an important part of keeping my mother's memory alive. As the Open Hand Foundation board is currently restructuring, I am taking this time to step away from my role as a board member. I am no longer <laughs> of the Open Hand Foundation. Oh, no! His family kicked him out. Oh, man. That, yeah, they must have kicked him out for being a dipshit about this. Like, he can't be trusted with, like, their, their tax evasion. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, he made them look bad. Like, Gerard's incompetence, like, exposed the entire fraud with, with the family and, and all this. Yeah, yeah, he... Oof. For the foreseeable future, should the event continue, IndieLand will solely be focused on highlighting indie games. There will be no charity component. I love helping <laughs> Wait, what? So, like, he's so passionate about supporting the charity, about supporting, like, dementia, but he, like, he's not going to continue? Huh? Like, what sense does that make? Like, if you legitimately did nothing wrong... Yeah. Yeah, That that is the most sus thing we've heard so far. Like, if... If there was no real legal issue in regards to this charity event, if there really was no criminal activity, as you claim, like, wouldn't the event proceed as planned? Like, wouldn't the donations, like, clear clear the entire matter up? Like, no, because we know about, like, uh, the administrative fees that uh, that you uh, – that were m removed from the account, right? We, we have, like uh, – some speculation on what happened, you know, tax evasion and stuff like that. Like we, we know that, um, yeah, like I, yeah, highly sus to me, right? Like if, if the event meant so much to you, you, you would continue donating to the charity, right? Like you would continue doing it, but, but you're not, you're backing out of it because of, a. Uh, untrue allegations as you uh you, as you claim working community and working with developers and if there are developers out there that want me to play their games i would be honored to continue to do so i would now like to take a deeper look and respond to some of the many accusations made much of this is going to be dry and complicated because we're dealing with business finances tax exempt nonprofits, the irs and legal issues but serious allegations need a serious and thorough response. I will also have included links to official government websites, reliable third-party sources, and copies of relevant Open Hand Foundation documentation related to all these topics in the description down below. Let's start with the Open Hand Foundation's formation. When my mother passed away in 2013, we donated her brain and spinal cord to the same academics and doctors we worked with to further advance their research. Wait, but, wait, but you said you weren't working with doctors, right? Like, if you were already, like, involved with, with doctors and research, like, how exactly did you not find a suitable charity to donate the money to? Like, why did it take so long? There's a link in the description to her autopsy report that confirms her brain and spinal cord were both donated to science. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he didn't donate the money, but he donated his mother's brain. The woman who gave birth to him. <laughs> like, what? This was an extremely personal decision for us. Because of my family's history, we had considered all legacy efforts that we had personally made to be a part of the Open Hand Foundation's history, which ultimately led to its creation. Now, here's another glaring problem. If you go back to... Do-ba-do, hang on. Okay. Any of their filings, for instance, this is from 2016, you can see that when they checked their organizations, they called themselves a Section 501c3 exempt private foundation. 
The problem with this is, according to the IRS, they actually have two uh, designations, private foundations and public charities. Generally, organizations that are classified as public charities have an active program of fundraising and receive contributions from many sources, including the general public. In 2014, the Open Hand Foundation was originally registered as a 501c3 private foundation, which under the law is a nonprofit corporation formed to carry out charitable, religious, literary, educational, or scientific purposes that is recognized as tax exempt. When the foundation realized the limitations placed on the private foundations themselves, they sought out advice of legal and financial counsel and took action to switch to a public charity. In February of 2016, they filed to terminate the foundation's private status. For more information on the difference between private foundations and public charities, and on private foundations terminating their own statuses, I have provided links to the IRS website down below. In March of 2016, the IRS acknowledged the receipt for termination of private status and indicated to the Open Hand Foundation the necessary requirements the foundation must follow in order to comply with the IRS code. A copy of those notices are also down below with supporting IRS documentation. Further, based on the acknowledgement of the private status termination, the foundation was now required to operate like a public charity as described in the IRS code for a period of 60 months. However, the foundation was also instructed to continue to file as if it were a private foundation. Any possible issues pertaining to such filings can only be considered clerical errors and are in no way intended to be misleading, fraudulent, or criminal in any nature. Since that Well, yeah, nobody wants nobody wants something to be seen as criminal, right? Obviously, we're going to have to have like, uh, you know, the real experts look at this. I don't know shit about taxes, but like uh I, I, uh, I imagine there's some like really people are going to have to look at this. It, it's kind of my thought on it. Like I, I know better than to take Gerard at his word. Um, time, the open hand foundation has been compliant in operating as a public charity. And as such, the status is directly reflected on the IRS's own website. I'll link to you where you can search for yourself to see the foundation currently has a public charity status. Many crimes, especially fraud, go undetected. And unless you do something especially egregious on your filings, nothing will be flagged to the IRS. In saying yep. that, however, these filings don't seem to be done properly, and they aren't even signed, which is definitely a legal requirement. In April 2016, after receiving confirmation of the Foundation's termination of private status, the IRS had completed a randomized audit on the 2014 tax return and continued to allow the Foundation to operate tax exempt as it found nothing wrong with the foundation's filings additionally the foundation wait in 2014 though that, that that's before like the the indie land thing that, that was that wasn't until 2018 files all their taxes electronically which does not require a physical signature on the actual forms only e-file authorization forms that are sent from a certified public accountant for electronic signature not only is this legal but it is the industry standard for filing taxes here in the United States. The audit letter is linked down below. On to donations. There are generally two types of donations, unrestricted and restricted donations. Most donations are unrestricted in nature. By being unrestricted, donations can go to anything, research, administrative costs, travel expenses, salaries, or bonuses, doesn't matter. Unrestricted donations come in the form of a donate link on a website, maybe a Twitch stream, or even a telethon. The Open Hand Foundation raised funds in an unrestricted manner with the intention to restrict a larger donation towards dementia research. Larger restricted donations ensure clear measures and direction, but can take time, whereas unrestricted donations are often instantaneous and not tracked. This is one of the big reasons as to why the donation took so long. The organization did not raise enough money to make the impact that would allow the funds to be restricted and avoid those high admin costs. Now, let me walk you through the finances. Revenue sources for the foundation include direct and indirect public support, the golf fundraiser revenue, and IndyLand revenue. The foundation's expenses include costs for the golf fundraiser and IndyLand, operational costs, and various fees, totaling for $178,951.17 worth of expenses over the last nine years. It's also factually inaccurate 
that all the money the foundation received in 2023 is unaccounted for. For starters, the Tiltify campaign for Indy Land raised just over $64,315.95. After platform and processing fees, we received $61,303.33 from PayPal and Tiltify's credit card processor Stripe. Adding the $15,000 sponsorship donation to the initial estimate income for IndyLand 2023 equates to $76,303.33. This does not include merchandise, bits, or subscriptions from Twitch. However, there were real production costs when it comes to running this event. We paid for flights, hotels, appearance fees, supplies, food and catering, costs of good for merchandise, etc. All of that totaled just under $12,000. This is still an outstanding invoice as not everything has been received or paid yet. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits along with merchandise have offset some of the production costs. So to say the- So why did he not donate the money until these accusations surfaced? Like he made such a big deal about like, oh, restricted versus unrestricted. That's why it took so long. But the instant he got exposed, like suddenly the money is just donated. You know, that, that's a that's a pretty red flag here, but okay. The money is missing is simply wrong. Also, to be clear, IndieLand does not make money on YouTube. We typically stream only on Twitch. And when we did simulcast to YouTube, we made little to no money. Next, let's talk about the golf tournament. And the interesting thing about the money the golf tournament raises is that it seems to disappear. Fans of the completionist who rushed out to defend him try to claim that because Gerard hadn't spent the money, it wasn't stolen. From 2014 to 2017, filings show the Open Hand Foundation received between $30,000 to $60,000 per event. This is likely underreported. In 2019, the foundation reported $123,816 in revenue, but the accusers allege that $14,000 is unaccounted for. Our books do reconcile. And these accusations are the result of bad math and missing information. The 2019 Indyland's net proceeds were $82,409.19. And when combined with $31,371.55 in revenue from the golf tournament and $10,000 from a direct supporter, it adds up to $123,780.74. To insinuate that there are further issues with 2020 and 2021 tax returns, people forget that there was a pandemic that shut the world down. The golf events are generally scheduled in the springtime when the weather is good for outdoor events. However, when the foundation had to delay the event, the only available dates weren't until November of 2021. Not only did the foundation take donations and sponsorships that had already been paid for for 2020 and roll them towards 2021, but not everyone was comfortable being in public with bigger groups of people. So participation was drastically down, especially since the pandemic brought on a recession. Finally, pledges and donations are not always collected at the same time of the event. It might take a few months to receive the funds, often rolling them into the following year's income. As for what the costs are to run an event like this, there are event organizers, venue expenses, crafts and catering, event dinners, support staff, production equipment, rentals, event brand and merchandise, security, insurance, and more. Smaller events have smaller costs, and as the foundation scale the events, the expenses increase proportionally. There's talk of $125,000 being embezzled for unknown admin purposes. As previously mentioned, we went from a private to public charity, and under both nonprofit structures, we're legally obligated to spend money on expenses. With that said, it is perfectly legal to hold donations, and in fact, it's not uncommon for organizations to hold their funds. I'm a computer scientist, so I really, really urge anybody that has a background in tax accounting for charitable organizations, or hell, if the IRS is watching this, one of the things that Carl brought up to me very, very recently was the 5% rule, which again, this is a very complicated rule, but the idea is the US government expects foundations to use their assets to benefit society. And they enforce it through section 4942 of the Internal Revenue Code, which requires private foundations to distribute 5% of the market value, the fair market value of their endowment each year for charitable purposes. So again, I want to see how this rule is done because according to the filings we've seen, they haven't actually given any money. They spent money in operating expenses, 
But again, we need to actually see if they're giving their money to a charitable organization. Yeah, they weren't, though. Like, that was the issue. Like, they didn't donate any money. He's dancing around the actual issue. Referencing that same rule mentioned in this claim, the foundation is actually not legally required to distribute a minimum of 5% a year in charitable donations because, once again, the Open Hand Foundation is a public charity. This means that the $600,000 that was donated did not incur any fees or is not subject to any tax penalties. To insinuate that the money was missing and that the penalties were to be applied and that my family or myself had to float the missing funds is just not true. Also, none of the money from the Open Hand Foundation has ever funded any of my projects for my company. I want to stress that not a dollar raised from IndyLand and its supporters was ever used on anything to personally benefit me, my family, or any of our companies. We never touched this money nor ever moved it. Yeah, companies, plural. Like I said, these guys are, <laughs> are rich as fuck. So they, uh, yeah, they're fun. I, I think it's safe to say they're funneling the money somewhere, somehow. Like, I would say it's probably for tax evasion purposes is uh, my my understanding of the issue. As evidence in the public documents, no one at the foundation has ever drawn a salary. Saying that we are fraudsters, that what we are doing is illegal and constitutes charity fraud, that we are using my dead mother's name to potentially embezzle money and steal is categorically false. I should have been more <laughs> transparent about the money not being donated, and that's on me. But my family and I have not done anything illegal. Not before then, and not since. And as mentioned previously, I don't know. Correspondence from the IRS to prove that. Furthermore, my family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps. Okay, so the legal term, the legal teams were. Uh... <laughs> so he confirmed that they spoke to legal teams exactly, exactly like I predicted. Uh, let's uh, let's my rewind that. My family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps, as the allegations that have been made have been made with complete disregard for the truth of the matter. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. They have directly jeopardized the safety of me, my staff, and my family, and that is not okay. I want to reiterate and specifically address that both the Foundation and I have been accused of forgery, embezzlement, and charity fraud. The allegations imply the foundation forged tax returns because they were Okay, how did <laughs> How did How did uh, Billy Mitchell's lawsuit against Carl Jobs go again, Gerard? Like I know Billy Mitchell was a Billy Mitchell has been like abusing the court system to go after gamers for years. So, uh, I don't know. I I don't know. Like um uh, I kind of said this on on Discord before I went live, but I wasn't convinced that like Carl Jobs uh his uh, his video was done with the best intentions because, you know, after the whole Billy Mitchell thing, it feels like this is his thing now. He's just going after YouTubers <laughs> like this. But uh, I don't know, man. Like, after seeing this video, I think I'm 100% on Team Jumps. Like, I I'm much more convinced by, like, what those guys are saying than what, like, the completionist is saying, especially since he's clearly leading into a legal threat against them. Like, fuck you, Gerard, you piece of shit. Them when we e-filed them, or that we altered numbers to hide income or expenses, we can account for every single dollar received and spent in the last nine years. He sounds so angry here. He sounds way more angry now than he did when he was talking about his dead mom. Like, oh, you you think I would have started a charity <laughs> the scam my, uh, using the name of my dead mom? Like, he sounds a lot angrier now. We do not have anything to hide. And due to the overwhelming amount of people who have been instructed to file complaints to the IRS and Department of Justice, we understand an audit may be coming and we welcome it. Our legal and financial teams have assured us that we have done nothing criminally wrong or illegal. Any possible issues in our paperwork can only be described as clerical errors and are easily amendable. Content creators and influencers should be held accountable when faced with serious allegations. However, the narrative can get taken so far away from the truth that the court of public opinion supersedes fact. 
I recognize and take accountability for all of my actions. At the same time, I am not going to let my reputation be compromised by allegations that are not true. Yeah, I, hmm, I, I don't think he's going to recover from this. Like, I think even under like the, uh, the very real possibility that his legal team is able to brush this under the rug, like with the, uh, with the IRS, which I think, I, I think is very likely considering his background. Uh, I think when it, when it actually matters, like the, the YouTube community thing, like his, his reputation's in ruins, right? This is going to be like the next major blow against his channel. I, I feel like this is going to be something people talk about for a long time because people know that like the IRS can't like um, deal with charity fraud, right? People know ab about like these kind of issues. People know that people get away with this kind of thing all the time. So like, I think I think he's already like I think he's done honestly I, I think uh, I think this is a this is gonna be a major bl blow to his brand and his credibility and he knows that that's why he's so angry. I own up to my part in this, but I will not be painted as someone who is a con artist and embezzler. I won't be someone whose name gets tarnished without putting up a fight. I owe it to my friends, my family, and myself to stand up to this situation right now. Oh no, Gerard is coming for you, <laughs> Carl Jobs. You better be, you better be worried. You, you better be concerned. He's gonna complete you. Like, oh man. I want to leave you all with how the Open Hand Foundation got its name. My mom always had this saying that she and my dad would share with each other: an open hand is always full, meaning the more you give, the more you will receive. This has been imbued in my entire life and how I've lived. And if you followed my journey. You would know that's all I ever tried to do for my friends, my family, and my community. All I ever wanted to do was to share my legacy and give. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all very soon. Yeah, okay. That was <laughs> Oh wow. That was interesting. That that last last bit there with the uh with the legal threats, like, oh, that's that's really interesting. That more than anything makes me think that like um uh... Like, he's a lot more worried than he lets on, honestly. Yeah, this is, um, he tries avoiding the stereotypes, but this very much is the the stereotypical YouTube apology video with, like, the emotional manipulation and, like, overloading you with information that you couldn't possibly understand while, refuse, while not being able to refute the actual issue, right? Like, again, I brought this up while I was watching this, like, he he talked a lot about like the unrestricted versus like restricted thing and like how that was why he couldn't donate the money, but he donated the money a couple of a weeks after the allegations came out, right? Like he donated that in a hurry after like the allegations surfaced because they were serious allegations that had some real weight behind them, some real credibility. And although he's denying it, he is of course he is. Um, I think Carl Jobs. And, uh, you know, everyone else is, who is, who's been looking into this does know what they're talking about, right? Like, I do think these – Carl Jobs has uh, just gone after uh, Billy Mitchell, right, with, like, uh, similar allegations and, like uh, – well, it wasn't tax-related. But, like, you know, we, we've kind of – we've seen, like, similar abuses of the court system before, right, with, with in regards to this channel. So – I, I feel like if Gerard really, really comes after Call Jobs, that's going to really be a blow against his channel, even if he wins. Like, that that's something. Like, I imagine the fans will come out in, in support of Jobs because because of just the, uh, you know, Jobs was reporting on something that was, we know this for a fact now, was incorrect, right? You know, the money did not get donated. And that was the core issue, right? Like Gerard is making this big bluster about like, oh, we didn't do anything illegal, blah, blah, blah. Like we're coming for you, Jobst. But like what he reported on, you know, the fact that the money wasn't donated was was accurate. You know, like that. that's kind of my take on this is that like everything Jobst reported on was rooted in truth. Now you can argue like uh, you know tax law and stuff like that. Like we did everything correctly, we filed correctly, but like at the end of the day, the money was not donated. So like objectively speaking, Carl Jobs, uh, the information he put forward was correct, even if like he got the 
uh, the context wrong. Like he can't know everything about your filings and what you're doing, like at what time you did what and like, you know, the transitioning from a private to a public. Like um, it, it just seemed all I, I don't know. Like Jobs, uh, there was a very clear problem with the charity that Jobs addressed, and uh, there were indications that there. I, I don't think Jobs did anything wrong, honestly. Like the more I think about it, like I'm a hundred percent on Jobs' side. Like he reported on a story, and uh, you know, uh, put forward some evidence, and a lot of it was has been confirmed to be true. So I don't understand Gerard's like insistence that like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. To me, it just it, it just makes him look more guilty, honestly. Like to me, it just seems like he's uh he's getting increasingly desperate, especially since like he's not continuing the charity and he's been kicked off the board and stuff like that. Like I imagine his family is really upset with him. Cuz that was the uh that was the belief that I saw online was that like the entire chair the entire family has been like tax evasion uh involved with these kind of scams for years, right? Like his dad's been in doing charity uh charity fraud stuff. Like he's kind of a sleazy businessman type, you know, like they're there's been, like, some talk about that. I've been, like, reading about that. Um, I don't think this is going to stick. Like, I think Gerard uh, is going to see further repercussions for this. Like, especially since, like, he uh, blatantly lied in this video. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see we'll, we'll have to see just uh, if the audience reacts to it. Like, uh, right now, I feel like he does have, like, uh, much like Pro Jared did, he has, like, a very dedicated group of of people who will just like religiously defend him no matter what. Uh, oops, let's see. Over the I can't look at X because I don't have an account, but like, um, yeah, like it seems like he has like a handful of people who will just like blindly believe everything he says, but like everyone else though, they're going to be concerned more with the facts. Right. And I, I think the facts don't put Gerard in the best light. Like, I think at the very least, there are questions to be asked. I, I do think there is going to be more that comes out from this. I think Carl Jobs is going to do, uh, you know, a follow-up video to this. And I, I think there's going to be, like, um, <laughs> uh, I think we're going to see some legal drama here. Uh, is this going to be, like, the the new Ricada Law channel? Like, am I going to have to get, like, a Baldo or something? I don't know. But... Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, this is a really, really interesting situation, and I cannot wait to see how it develops further.